Hi there, thank you for joining me today. Today we are going to learn how to draw these moths and I'm going to show you how I color them in with my acrylographs. Using acrylographs is one of my favorite ways to color my work. Um, I have found a way that works for me. I know that acrylographs can be very trying at times <laughs> and difficult to work with, but I found ways to make them work for me and I'm excited to show you some of those techniques today. I have touched on them in my last two bullet journal setups. So I thought I'd actually do a video showing you how to draw the moths and then how I color them in with my acrylographs. So let's get into it. Okay, so I am using Strathmore mixed media paper on a vellum surface. It doesn't have to be a vellum surface. This is just all I had. So that's what I will be using. <laughs> okay, and I'm grabbing my pencil and we're going to get to sketching our flowers. You're gonna wanna keep your tracing paper nearby just so that we can make it easier for ourselves. Um, so I'm, again, I just use the Artist First Lightweight Smooth Tracing Paper. Um, no particular reason, just use it because I've been using it from the get-go <laughs> and it's pretty inexpensive. But we're going to draw three kinds of moths on our paper. So for our first moth, we're going to draw our middle body portion. And I'm just drawing these big for you so that you can see them. I guess I should make them darker. So I switched out my pencil so that I can make darker lines and you can see better what I'm doing. Okay, so we're going to start drawing down the side of our body. And from the middle, we're just going to come out slightly from the middle and then round off the two edges together. And that's going to be one part of our wing. So then we can grab our tracing paper. And then we're just going to flip it, line it up and trace over it. And then just make this line a little bit darker for you so that you can see. And then just we're going to draw a curved edge triangle for the body and at the top we're going to draw a curved edge little rectangle, a curved edge half circle and then we're going to draw our legs. So for the legs you're going to draw extended triangles kind of like that and that's all you're going to draw and just get gradually smaller and shorter as you go. If you wanted them to line up perfectly, you can use your tracing paper. I am not too concerned because they have legs go off in different directions. But again, it's up to you what, how you want it to look. And then draw our second set of legs. And there we have, oh, <laughs> I forgot the antenna. Um, for this moth, we're going to draw the antenna going out like that. And there's your first moth done. Okay, so for our next moth, we're going to draw the body. So again, a triangle with rounded edges. And then an elongated triangle with a rounded tail for the body. That's a little bit thick so I'm just going to make that a little bit thinner. Okay and then we're going to draw the one side of the wings. So we're going to start off with the top of the wing. So we're going to just curve out like this and go out to the end and then curve down toward the body. And then for the bottom portion, we're going to do the same, kind of, kind of like a teardrop. So that one's going to be more of a teardrop shape. Okay. 
And then we're going to grab our tracing paper. And then we're just gonna flip it over, line it up, and trace it. You don't have to use the tracing paper, you can eyeball it, eyeball the outline and go from there. Um, so right away I want, I don't like this very much so I'm just going to bring this in like that more. There we go. So yeah, feel free to adjust your moth as you go. I just wanted to kind of bring that out a little bit more and then we are going to draw the antenna which are going to be super simple and straightforward okay and now we're going to draw our third moth which is my favorite we're going to draw a slightly bigger rounded triangle or elongated triangle so I draw it a little bit longer for a thicker body okay and then for the wings you're going to draw Kind of a flat button teardrop or a protruding flat button teardrop if that makes sense. <laughs> and then for the wings we're going to start going straight down the body. You're going to come around, you're going to draw the little hanging portion and then have the wing kind of scalloped like that okay then again we're gonna grab our tracing paper and then we're just going to flip it over now this is where it gets a little bit trickier we want to line up the, the this portion down here so it's more important that we line up this portion and then we could just adjust here as we go. And then again, the antenna. And those are our three moths. So now we're going to get to the fun part, which is coloring. Okay, so I retraced my moths so that they are a little bit smaller and I didn't want to have the dark pencil lines smudge with my color graphs. So retraced them. So here we are. We're going to color them in now. I will be using the Cool Fall Acrylograph set from Archer and Olive as well as a white acrylograph too. So we're going to be using these to color in. I also grabbed my palette paper, my Strathmore palette paper. You don't have to use palette paper, you can use whatever you have. Um, I like using these for mixing my paint with water and adding water. I also have my The Pigeon Letters Studio brush and it is round size 4 and then some water as well. So when you're painting with the acrylographs, it's really nice to have water nearby so that you can clean your brush when you're changing colors, but also add water where you need. Um, I also like painting with the acrylographs because it creates more texture and visual interest in your images. I also have a towel for dabbing my brush on for when I pick up too much water. If you're doing this in your notebook you want to be careful how much water you're using because it will bleed through. I definitely I think my September setup I got super carried away and ended up with a lot of bleed through. So we're gonna start coloring this guy. We're gonna use um, Coco and Mothwing. Honestly, I think these are two of my favorite colors, or at least my most used colors from out of all of the acrylographs. Okay, so we're gonna start with the Mothwing, which is the lighter of the two. I'm pretty sure I'm running out of ink for my Mothwing. <laughs> so, um, if that's the case, we're just going to draw directly on the paper, add a little bit of water, 
and just start spreading the paint. I know for a lot of people it's a love-hate relationship with the acrylographs because the ink can be a little bit unpredictable <laughs> and I totally get it because for example with this one I'm struggling to get the ink out a little bit but that's also because I'm too lazy to clean the tip. So it's super messy, the tip is super messy right now. If I go and I clean it it'll work a lot better <laughs> but I'm lazy. So we're just going to go ahead and paint with it as is. So we're just going to paint about three quarters of the way down the wing. And then we're going to grab cocoa and activate our cocoa. And add a little bit of water to the brown. And then just start painting. We're going to create a gradient. So before the paint gets a chance to dry, we're going to go back in with our cocoa. And blend the cocoa back down into the or the moth wing and blend the moth wing back down into the cocoa just getting rid of any harsh lines for our gradient and there we have our gradient it happens really quickly which is really fun and convenient and the less water you use the quicker it's going to dry the faster you work the less water you're going to need <laughs> Then I want to paint the body of my moth in the cocoa, which is the darker brown. So we're just going to fill in the middle here. And then just color the body in here as well. Okay, so while we wait for that to dry, I'm going to grab my cocoa acrylograph and we're going to draw in the legs. Then I'm just going to start outlining my moth. And then once you're happy with that, you can start adding in details. So I like the idea of these rough squares on the back of the moth. And of course, you want to wait until your picture has dried before you start adding more paint on. And I just smudged my <laughs> picture on the side there. And so we're going to wait for that guy to dry and move on to our next moth, which I think I am. Let's use the, the brick red with the sweet melon. And again, we're going to use a variation of the gradient because gradients can be a lot of fun to use. And I think this is probably one of my most used red pens. <laughs> We may run into a similar issue as with the moth wing. I used to feel really self-conscious about how I used to paint 
and that's because I thought I would paint wrong. And over time I've come to realize how ridiculous that is, that the concept of, oh, you're painting wrong. Um, it, no. <laughs> Basically, for this project especially, we're just getting paint down on the page. So it might not look pretty um, while we're painting or getting the paint down on the page, but that's what that's why I love using the acrylic graphs because we're going to go in and we're going to make adjustments and fix things up. And as you can see, since the moths are symmetrical, I ended up doing the same on the side that I did on that side, just so that it looks on purpose. <laughs> you don't want to be too hard on yourself. Just whatever you do on the one side, do it on the other side. So we're grabbing the sweet melon. I think I've only ever used this pen to swatch. <laughs> and we're going to go in, add some water. I used to get really frustrated using acrylic graphs, but then when I started using them as more than just paint pens, but as actual paint, I definitely started having more fun with them and seeing them in a different way. Yeah, they can still be frustrating to use, especially when you're trying to do outlines or whatever the case may be, but very rarely is any specific pro um product perfect <laughs> so you just have to kind of experiment and find a way that works for you especially if you already have them um, definitely experiment and play with your products to find what works for you so I'm gonna go in with the fiber red and color in the body Okay, and then once that is dry, I'm going to go in and add some scallops to the edge of my moth. I never appreciated how beautiful moths really are. I always just thought it was butterflies. And so when I was doing my mood boarding and researching for drawing my moths, it was really fun to see how beautiful moths really are. Once that dries, we'll go over it again, making sure that we fill it in and it's more opaque. Okay, and then taking the red and adding red scallops to the melon color. And we're going to do the same here. We'll go over it to make it more opaque. And then we're going to go in and start adding details. And one of the details I wanted to add is just lines going through to the bottom here. And even if you get a little bit carried away, just go back in and get carried away on the other side to even it out so that it looks purposeful. <laughs> so then we're just going to take the fire brick and we're going to add our lines here too. Okay and then I wanted to add some red detail onto the scallops and outline
and I'm also going to outline these, these guys with the red as well because I like the contrast but definitely outline it in the sweet melon if that's what you prefer and I'm just going to go in and add just a little bit more color in there and as you can see I just smudged this guy so we're gonna go in once it's dry again and just color it in with the sweet melon over top so that we can get rid of the smudging so there we go okay so we're gonna let that guy dry and we're gonna get going on our last moth which will be this one and we're going to do it using the Midnight Moonlight and the Blue Willow. And I'm gonna do a ombre effect as well because I think it just looks really, really good. So we're gonna start off with the Blue Willow. So we're gonna take this one about halfway. And then the Midnight Moonlight, we're gonna start at the bottom and make our way to the top. And just like with our first moth, we're gonna wanna work fast so that we get some of the, ooh, I almost dumped that in my tea, <laughs> until so that we get, it doesn't dry out completely and we're able to get that gradient effect. And again, we're gonna wanna work fast and work out any harsh lines in our gradient. like that okay gonna grab some blue okay and then I think for fun I'm going to color in the top of the wings here in the dark blue Again, when we're painting, we're just putting color down. We're not aiming for perfection. We're just getting some texture in there. Okay, and then using the lighter blue willow, going to color in the body of the moth. The other trick I've discovered to using the acrylographs is when you're coloring like this, don't scratch down on the page. So just lightly push the paint around and fill in as you go. That way you're not scratching the paint off. <laughs> And don't forget to shake up your paint, your pen. It's been a while since I've shaken my pen. So um, the ink, the paint does separate and that's when you run into issues where it's not flowing as well. So you're just gonna wanna go in and shake it. Remember to shake it. And there where you have bubbles like that, I like to just take a paintbrush and spread the bubbles out so that it doesn't get those doesn't dry with the bubbles okay and then we are going to wait on that to dry and then we will come in and decorate it and finish it up okay so i went in and i added some detailing including the teardrops along the edges here um for and on the dark blue surface i used the lighter blue and then where we did the gradient i used the darker blue I wanted to add some details with the white so I went in with the white and added some color in there 
and then added some white touches in here as well and I added the antenna to that moth that was missing. And there you have your moths all colored in, ready to go. I did want to touch on the fact that while we stopped here, you can take this a little bit further and add some more details. This page got a little bit messy, but I went in with a paper mate flare and a Sharpie S gel pen and a jelly roll in size 10. And I just went in and I outlined and added some more detail. So definitely feel free to play. You can take your work from that to something more like this. That is our project for today. Let me know down below what your favorite color combination was to use, whether you used acrylic grass or not. Let me know what colors you used regardless. <laughs> I always love seeing new and different color combinations. So let me know down below. If you did recreate these, please tag me over on Instagram at Natasha Miller Creates because I would love to see. Thank you so much for your time today and I will see you in the next one. For more bullet journal and art content, check out these videos linked here.